Hi everyone, welcome back. And this time I'm going to be doing a quick film study focusing on Terence Crawford. Amidst the recent rumors that negotiations for a fight between him and Errol Spence have begun, I wanted to make this video in case the fight between the two actually becomes official, because I believe at this point in time, Terence Crawford will beat Errol Spence. So without further ado, uh, let's go into my quick film study. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that Terence Crawford is one of the best switch hitters in boxing, and this is something that pretty much everyone knows at this point. However, he's naturally right-handed and likes to primarily fight in southpaw for most of the time. A lot of times he'll start out in orthodox, but will quickly switch to southpaw once he has the timing and rhythm down of his opponent. And just like Vasily Lomachenko, Terence Crawford likes the lead hook with his dominant hand as well as the jab, and this makes his lead hook and jab much more powerful than if he was an orthodox because it's with his dominant hand. And the most important thing is that he has a high enough ring IQ in both stances. So here we see Terence Crawford in the orthodox stance. He shuffles over to his left, flashes the jab with his left hand, uh, moves over again, and seamlessly switches over to southpaw, giving his opponent a different look. Like I said, Crawford's main weapon in the southpaw stance is his long jab that he could also disguise as a hook. And since his right hand is his dominant hand, he will be able to generate much more power on his punches when he does this. Here you see Crawford shoot the jab from the southpaw stance and have the presence of mind to pull away from the counter jab from Benavidez. And then you're going to see him try to control the space with his lead hand with that lead jab and then really swing that right hook. You notice he tried to put everything on that right hook. So here we're going to see Crawford along the ropes is going to shoot the jab with his lead hand down to the body. And we're also going to see him shoot the hook with the same hand and it looks like a jab. So Victor Postol here can't really tell if it's going to be a jab or if it's going to be a lead hook. So there you see him try to counter that jab with the right hook. He shoots the jab, that stiff long jab, he steps over to the right. And then you're going to see him shoot the jab once again, step over to his right to remain defensively responsible. Here Crawford is able to keep Postol off of him while his back is against the ropes by fending him off with his lead hand, which is also his dominant hand. And the thing is Crawford's lead hook in the southpaw stance also looks like it's a jab at first, but comes in from a different angle, and this could make his opponents very wary of getting in on him as they would have to get past this powerful jab and lead hook. And so we also notice that Terence Crawford shoots his lead hand. Every time he does that, he steps over to his right, to the outside of Victor Postol's lead shoulder. And this is to remain defensively responsible, because every great offense must have a built-in defense. You notice that he shoots the hook, steps over to his right so he doesn't get countered. Shoots the jab, steps over to his right, and he doesn't get countered. He's doing this all on the ropes. He remains defensively responsible this way. Benavides right there landed two jabs on Crawford. This is controlling the outside range with that jab while he's stocking. That jab of Benavides. He's going to have to out jab Terrence Crawford. Crawford's lead hand attacks are also very dangerous because he's very skilled in gaining the dominant outside angle in the southpaw versus orthodox matchup. This makes his hooks come from the blind side and creates an opening for his jab because normally the lead hand of the orthodox opponent would be in the way of your jab and vice versa. So stepping over to the outside where his lead foot is on the outside of his opponent's lead foot creates this dominant angle from which he could attack from. So we see Crawford shoot the jab to the body with, from the outside angle and he steps over to his right to remain defensively responsible. And then once again he's going to step over to the outside angle control with his lead hand and then shoot the jab and notice how he also shoots a hook and it kind of looks like a jab but it comes from the blind angle so you can't really tell if it's going to be a jab or a hook 
notice he keeps stepping over to the right and this whole time he has the dominant outside angle as well Benavides right there landed two jabs on Crawford this is controlling the outside range with that jab while he's stocking that jab with Benavides he's gonna have to out jab Terrence Crawford Southpaw to start this round here Crawford fought half of the first round right hand this now we're going to take a look at what I believe would give Errol Spence the most problems, which is Terrace Crawford's lateral movement. So we see Crawford move laterally to his right, away from the corner, and so we're going to see Postal is going to try to cut the ring off on him by mirroring him. So we're going to see Postal try to cut the ring off by moving over to his left. And then we see Crawford redirect his balance and change directions to his left so that Postal can't cut the ring off. So we see Crawford change directions, making Postal chase after him, making him follow him. And then now Postal, not knowing which direction Crawford's going to go, is going to reach with his jab and Crawford easily counters him over the top. And so I just want to add that constantly moving in every direction the way Crawford does is very tiring and isn't a style that is right for everyone. So just keep that in mind if you're going to try to use these skills into your own boxing. And so I just want to say that the threat of this lateral movement can make his opponents desperate to catch him with a punch when he's on the ropes. But this in turn creates a counterpunching opportunity for Crawford if they're reaching. And I believe this lateral movement would give Errol Spence the most problems if and when they fight. Okay, so now I want to talk about a key skill that's very basic, but very important part of Terence Crawford's arsenal, which is punching and moving at the same time to create openings. What many fighters do is they get into the habit of punching, then moving, but something you could do to create openings and improve your offense is to learn how to punch and move at the same time. So the first thing we notice is that Crawford is in an orthodox stance here. So this is actually an orthodox versus orthodox matchup. And so we see him shoot the jab and simultaneously step his left foot over to the left as he does that. And this sets up an angle that exposes the center line of Gamboa. So all Crawford has to do to completely expose the center line of Gamboa is swing his trailing foot around because his lead foot was already in position and you see the the foot positioning of both fighters form that of a T and so Gamboa is in a lot of trouble in this position. And so we see Gamboa try to adjust his position by swinging his trailing foot around to protect his center line but it's too late at this point. Crawford takes advantage and punches Gamboa while he's making a position adjustment. And this is one of the most basic boxing strategies there is. You punch and move at the same time in order to create advantageous positions for yourself. And while your opponent is adjusting to your positions, you're always punching them. And then we see Crawford continue to move around Gamboa while he's punching to keep that positional advantage. Yeah, you can handle those bad punches if you club in two different ways. Punch in between another knockdown score. Here's one of the best examples of Crawford's counterpunching abilities from the southpaw stance. And so we're going to see Crawford shoots the jab, backs up Ndongo, and now Ndongo's going to try to get him back. Crawford pulls from Ndongo's jab and steps back to avoid the straight left follow-up. And incredibly, he also counters this with his right hook as he's stepping back in order to make Ndongo reach with his straight left hand. And this is because the lead hook is one of the best counters to the straight when you're in the same stance matchups. So southpaw versus southpaw or orthodox versus orthodox, the lead hook's always one of the best counters against the straight. And before Ndongo can even retract his straight left hand, Crawford follows up with a left hook to the liver, effectively countering Ndongo's punch twice. So Crawford steps back to make Ndongo reach with that straight left hand, and as Ndongo is throwing that left hand, Crawford counters him with the right hook over the top of that straight left hand. And because Ndongo reached with that left hand, he has to take a long time to retract it, and as he's retracting it, 
Crawford counters him again with a left hook to the liver. So he effectively counters him twice. And this left hook to the liver tucks Ndongo into bed. Yeah, you can handle those bad punches if you're Crawford in two different ways. Punch in between. Another knockdown score. And here we're going to see Crawford look to set up a counter punching opportunity by using this position to bait Horn into throwing a punch. This is known as the forward leaning position and is the most common way to set up a counter punch. Notice Crawford's weight is distributed more onto his lead foot and his spine is leaning forward towards Horn. This is to make Crawford appear closer to Horn than he actually is. And the fact that Crawford is exposing his head by dropping his hands down to his waist further baits Horn into throwing a punch and even sells it to be a headshot. And here you see Horn takes the bait by once again lunging at Crawford and reaching with a punch to the head. Crawford makes Horn miss by simply transitioning his weight to his back foot, straightening his spine out and stepping back. And we notice Horn has been drawn out of position with both of his hands down and presenting his chin to Crawford like an early Christmas present. And there we see the check right hook once again land for Crawford. He had Floyd Mayweather. How so? <laughs> so why does the forward leaning position work so well? This is because it is a form of distance deception from Crawford. Contrary to popular belief, the distance between two fighters is not measured by how far your opponent's head is. And this is because he or she could be leaning forward or leaning backwards. The distance is actually measured by how far the lead foot of the two fighters are from each other. If Crawford was in a traditional stance, his head would naturally be much too far for Horton to reach. Therefore, by leaning forward, he makes it look like he is in range, when in fact he is not. And so by baiting Horn to throw, he simply shifts his weight back and springs the trap. Now the big question is why doesn't everybody switch hit? And the biggest reason is defense and coordination. Boxing is more than just having a good jab and a good lead hook. And most people can't switch hit because they cannot put together all the aspects of boxing together in both stances the way Terence Crawford does. And especially on defense. So now we're going to take a look at Crawford's display of defense from the southpaw stance. He's trying to confuse Gambo. I think that when he was fighting him in his conventional style, he... So we first see Crawford uses his elbow to block the body shot, and he doesn't drop his hands to do this, which is very important. Next we see Crawford fade away from this overhand left. Next we see him turn his body so he could catch this hook. And then we see Crawford roll the straight left with his lead shoulder. And more importantly, he was able to do this because he adjusted the position of his rear foot as the punch was coming so that he could place his shoulder in the way of the punch. And this is truly brilliant boxing. He was able to move his feet as his defending, which is so important. He's trying to confuse Gambo. I think that when he was fighting him in his conventional style, so what makes me think Terence Crawford would beat Errol Spence? Mainly I believe the lateral movement of Crawford will allow him to avoid most of Spence's offense and inside fighting. If Crawford fights southpaw, then he'll be able to jab with Spence, which is key because Spence's jab is his key to victory in all of his fights. I believe Crawford has the counter-punching ability to neutralize Spence's jab and then outwork him down the final stretch of the fight. So what do you think would happen during this fight if and when it happens? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe and leave a like. And uh, I'll see you guys all in the next one. Thank you all for watching.